So I do a lot of traveling. And here I am, I land someplace, and uh, it's a nice place, and I'm in a particular shul, and I'm really tired, and I want to go over for a coffee. And I just take a coffee, I just assume the coffee's for everyone, and someone comes over to me and says, excuse me, are you a member here? He looks at me, he knows I'm not a member there. I said, no, why? He said, coffee is only for members. Can you see the sign? It says, coffee for members only. I said, where I come from, we read signs differently. Like once this fellow that went swimming and the policeman comes and says, what's with you people? Don't you see the sign, no swimming allowed? He said, I read it, no, swimming allowed. You know, it all depends. He didn't like the joke so much. And he said, I'm very sorry, but this is the shul rule. And he tells me, this is mom and call, you understand? This is communal funds, and the rule is that um, you cannot just come in and have a coffee if you're not a member. I said, okay, I'm sorry, I, I will not take another coffee. I will not forget this coffee forever. Trust me, don't, don't worry about it. I mean, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And uh, so I'm in another shul the next day, and I was a little curious. And that was just like the little curiosity in me. I said, who's the uh, Russia call here? Who's like the Gaba? Yes. Can I take a coffee? Sure. I said, I'm not a member. He goes, it's mom and call. It's communal funds. It's made for everybody. Sure, you can take it. So I have a problem. Is communal funds a reason to take a coffee or not to take a coffee? I guess it depends who the Gabai is. Well, guess what? You are the Gabai of your own life. The most frustrating thing in the world when we get up there after 120 years is we're going to learn something, says the Tzadik of Shlomk of Zivil. And that is, just like it says, Kol mezenois of shaladim is ketsuvim le merosh hashanah le rosh hashanah, all of the sustenance, all of the money of a person, right? Whatever we have, whatever we own is predetermined from one rosh hashanah to the next. You're not going to have a penny more or a penny less. Okay, the Rebbein Yainah says it's based on your established, but I'm talking about within reasonable established, reasonable trying. You're not going to have any more or less, regardless of what you do. Same is true for every amount of pleasure and every amount of anxiety and challenge in our life. There's a certain amount of isurim, there's a certain amount of pain, there are going to be a certain amount of sleepless nights and uphill battles. There's going to be a certain amount of pleasure. The catch is, if you look at something you ought not to look at and you're deriving pleasure, your net result is not going to be you're going to have any more pleasure. At the end of the year, the pleasure will be deducted from someplace else. And for that matter, if it's difficult for you, not to look, and you're experiencing pain, and it's hard, there's some withdrawal symptoms. You're going to have that pain regardless. But what's happening is, you're using it right now, so you don't have to suffer anywhere else. Now here's the real catch. After 120 years, we come up to Shemayim, and I meet my friend, and my friend's going straight to Gan Eden, and I have an issue. I got to take a roundabout route to Gan Eden. I said, but at the end of the day, I didn't gain anything. Because whatever pleasure I derive from looking, I would have had anyway. And whatever pressures I felt I would feel, basically we both have the same amount of pleasure in life, net dollars, same amount of pain. And you're getting rewarded from it and I have to go through an issue now? But guess what? We're not up to that point. We're up to now when you're still looking at me. And you can do something about it. You won't gain. You won't lose. Why not get paid for it?